Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, it appears that in the US there's been a major thinking in regards to energy policy over the last few months. So let's have a look at this situation. Now, the two political parties are both agreed on the future of nuclear energy for uh, electricity generation. So to quote Giorgio Moroda and Phil Oakey, both the Democrats and the Republicans are together in electric dreams. However, will these dreams come true? Let's discuss. Now, although Washington has not yet changed the leadership, the entire US energy community is already on edge in anticipation of a revolution and a new breakthrough in their aim to finally secure the United States as world's main energy resource base. Now, the prevailing view among the American media outlets is that Donald Trump will immediately lift the ban on drilling and hydrocarbons production within the previously restricted territories, which included national parks and uh, other uh, government-owned uh, areas. However, the plans and expectations of energy professionals are much more ambitious. And our program document has recently been published on the website of the US Energy Commission, which states that the United States intends to triple the installed capacity of its nuclear power plants. Now, the document references the United States' success in oil and gas production, which positions the country as a leading global exporter of oil and gas. It also highlights the necessity for a transition to green energy sources that are safe and reliable. Now, this is understandable given that the Democrats were currently in the White House for the last few years, and as we recall a year ago, nuclear energy was officially recognised at the UN level as ecologically neutral and not causing harm to the environment. Now, the authors of the report emphasised that without the development, or more precise, resuscitation of nuclear energy, the US's global leadership will be in question. Therefore, the focus is on the three main areas. The construction of full-size light water reactors of the AP1000 type with electric generation capacity of 1100 megawatts, plus the development and implementation of both small modular and micro reactors. Now, nuclear reactor power has been in decline since the 2011 Fukushima accident in Japan, and a number of countries such as Germany have uh, closed all their nuclear power plants. However, attitudes are now changing in many countries, including the United States. Now, the demand for nuclear power is growing everywhere, following the growth in energy demand in uh, <coughs> general. I mean, data centers are a number of another of the energy intensive industrial sectors that really need a lot of electricity. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. And you can do this by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. And everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And I'm thanking you all now just for watching. Now, as we're all aware, nuclear energy is virtually inexhaustible. Once it's up and running, it's constant and effective source of electricity. Therefore, regarded as a primary energy source for the rapidly expanding artificial intelligence and data center sectors, which consume vast amounts of electricity. Now, in April of this year, Goldman Sachs forecast that 2030 data centers in the United States will account for 8% of all energy consumption from the current figure of 4%. Now, the potential for growth in the nuclear energy sector is also reflected in the investment decisions of prominent figures such as Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. I mean, Gates has uh, invested over a billion in the startup Tetra Power, which is developing small advanced reactors, while Bezos' Amazon paid $650 million in March for a data centre campus with a nuclear facility in Pennsylvania. Now, the target indicators have also been identified. By 2035, the United States is looking to add 30 gigawatts of new capacity. And then by 2040, the US nuclear industry must commission at least another 15 gigawatts each year. Now, in early September, the US Atomic Energy Administration published a report from the Geological Survey that stated the significant increase in generation capacity up to 60 gigawatts could be achieved through the construction of new power units 
on the site of an existing nuclear power plants. Now, an additional 95 gigawatts can be installed by installing small modular reactors on an existing site. However, the most promising approach, they think, is the gradual decommissioning of coal-fired power stations and the replacement of the power units from thermal to nuclear. Now, American power engineers have calculated the potential growth horizon of 120 to 170 gigawatts. It's also worth noting that the practical and innovative approach that the United States has taken. By allowing the use of existing sites, you have the avoidance of the mandatory licensing stage, namely the selection and approval of the location, the appropriate level of geological and seismological safety. This certification is already in place for existing power plants. However, it does raise a number of questions. First, it should be noted that present no current company in the United States is in a position to act as a sole contractor for the construction of power units on the declared AP1000 type. It's worth noting that the license holders for this reactor technology is Westinghouse and the, current, the company currently does not perform construction or installation work of these uh, reactors. And this is corroborated by the history of the third and fourth power units of the Voktel nuclear power plant in Georgia, which were constructed over a nine-year period instead of the plan four. Project also went three times over budget with cost overruns and Westinghouse itself withdrawing from the project at the final stage, presenting the four main investors with the task of independently carrying out the commission work, acceptance and inclusion of the reactors in the network. Now the investors have initiated legal proceedings seeking damages of two and a half billion dollars for Westinghouse for breach of contract. So the major problem in the US, and indeed around the West, is there's no equivalent to Russia's Rosatom that can design, build, install, manage, train the staff from the whole project from start to finish, which is what they're currently doing in Bangladesh, Egypt, Hungary and Turkey, as well as India and China, with large projects. And they've already built a number of small reactors, including a floating one on a barge in Chukotka. Another key factor is that the US companies do not have enough technical and engineering staff to manage the nuclear construction projects. Now, according to the US Department of Energy, 375,000 skilled workers are going to be needed to meet the globe of developing 200 gigawatts of new reactors by 2030. So, in addition to the lack of physical presence of those who can assemble the AP1000, there's also the negative experiences of its implementation. At one time, the Americans were responsible for the construction of four corresponding power units in China. All four facilities were delivered late. Now, Beijing hasn't disclosed the extent of the increase in the cost overruns, but they must have been massive. However, it terminated the contracts with the Americans and negotiated the transfer of the technology with full patent use immunity. Now, a couple of years later, the Chinese presented their own reactor, the Hualong, which was claimed was a rebranded version of the AP-1000. They then proceeded to disregard any agreements and there was a waiver of the claims. Now, regarding small modular reactors and micro-reactors, the US doesn't currently have any operational prototypes, although approximately two dozen companies and research institutions are currently developing the concept. Now, despite some companies going bankrupt over the last few years, the work's still ongoing in this sector, which encompasses reactors with a capacity of up to 300 megawatts. Now, two significant challenges have now been identified, though. The first is to obtain licenses. International nuclear legislation requires the licensing of the technology, which is relatively straightforward to do. Then, once this is done, the next step is to obtain a license for the power plant itself. Now, this is a much more complex process as it involves a number of lengthy and diverse tests that ensure the safety compliance with the declared performance characteristics, plus a multitude of many other factors. The main challenge lies in the fuel, of course, as the new generation of reactors, including small modular reactors, utilise a fuel source known as HALU, which is high-assay, low-enriched uranium, comprising base uranium, 
enriched to a level between 5 and 20 percent. Now currently there's only one industrial level producer of HALU, which is the nuclear fuel division of Rosatom, which produces the uranium with an enrichment level of 19.75 percent. Now the American division of Urenco has made progress in this area, but its total production was only 90 kilograms. By way of comparison, the RITM-200 reactor on the Russian LK-60 icebreaker requires half a ton of HALU on a one-off basis every 10 years. Now that situation is unlikely to change in the near future, so the US is going to have major problems trying to source its nuclear fuel, with Russia's Rosatom supplying 44% of the world's output, <coughs> plus the sanctions on Russian nuclear fuel and now Russia. Uh, restricting its exports going to be problems. So in general, the programs appear to be based on <coughs> substantiated assumptions at the simplest level. I mean, the United States currently has 94 reactors with a c c total capacity of 97 gigawatts. The required rate requires the, implies the construction and commission of 30 new AP1000 reactors by 2035, i.e. three per year, and then another 10 uh, each year until 2040. Now, the small modular reactors must be produced in line with this forecast, but that's just wishful thinking, and it's unlikely to be achievable in the future. That should be noted, however, the programme is just not feasible in the time frames. But I wouldn't write off the US completely in the medium to long term. I mean, the scientific and research base is well established and with competent potential and the challenges they have to overcome, including the situation, they could probably achieve in the 10 to 15 years. However, it's too early to say that the US will be able to catch up and they'll certainly never be able to overtake Russia. But it would be premature to write off the American nuclear industry at this stage. So anyway, that's what I see as the situation. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll keep you informed as uh, time goes on. Thanks for watching. Please like and share. Please subscribe and if you want to help me out, press the thanks button at the bottom of the screen and make a small donation. Don't forget to comment. I'd love to see your comments, read your comments and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.